And for more on the charges against the former president, we are joined in studio now by former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. Mr. Blagojevich, thank you for being here. Thank you, Natasha. So your personal and professional relationship with Mr. Trump, very well documented. That said, what is your response to the unsealed indictment? Well, I, I'm, I think like a lot of Americans, I'm shocked that they would do something like this to a president of the United States. It's unprecedented. No president ever has been charged criminally with documents, because that's what this is. And uh, I heard the attorney general say what he said, but the fact is that President Biden himself has admitted that he had documents, classified documents as a vice president. They didn't charge him, nor should they. Why are they charging President Trump? It's so blatantly political. This is a poisonous political hit by a weaponized prosecutor who is engaged in political interference during an election year. And it's a, a part of what's happening to American democracy today. It's this, these criminal prosecutors who have no accountability are injecting themselves in the political process. If you don't like Trump, vote against him. But don't prosecute him for things that are really not crimes at all. In fact, if they're anything, it's a civil matter. I understand that perspective. You know, Mr. Blagojevich, Donald Trump is the reason that you served eight years rather than 14 years in prison. Mr. Trump speaks a lot about loyalty. We heard him talking mm -hmm. about it just last night. Realistically, how bad would things have to be for you to sit here with me tonight <laughs> and criticize uh, the former president? No, you're, you're asking, you, you raise a good question. It's hard for me to be unbiased. I have a great deal of regard for President Trump for what he did for me. Um, he turned what was a nightmare and stopped it. I was sentenced to prison for 14 years for things that aren't crimes, for uh, political things, conversations that were initiated by then President-elect Obama. Neither one of us did anything criminal, but they came after me. They did what they did. These weaponized corrupt prosecutors, they lied, they cheat, and they used unlawful standards to get convictions for things that are legal. And so... Well, I do want to ask you, though, Mr. Blagojevich, you were found guilty on 18 felony counts, um, uh, you know, of corruption for your time as as governor. And that includes, as you mentioned, that effort to illegally trade the appointment of a senator in exchange for $1.5 in campaign contributions, shaking down a chief exec of a hospital for 25 k lying to the FBI in 2005. The list goes on. Yeah. You know the list better yeah. than I do. Um, in what way can you say that you went to prison for things that were not crimes. The so-called attempted sale of the Senate seat that you just talked about. Did you know that it was reversed by the appellate court years later? You don't know that. Well, I mean, but clearly that's the issue a jury... with the news media today. The news media is not doing its job asking the necessary questions. The job of the news media is to focus its attention on government power. And the government power today is with these uncontrolled prosecutors who have no accountability. And the media, instead of being a watchdog for the people, have become an attack dog for these very people. These are not crimes. I went to prison for non-crimes. President Trump saw that. If I went to prison for so-called selling a Senate seat, then Obama should have gone there for trying to buy one. Neither one of us did anything wrong. It was politics. I mean, clearly a jury disagreed with you. You were still two found trials, guilty two on trials. 17 of 20 counts. They, the, after the appellate court got done, three cases of requests for campaign contributions. I never took a penny. I never took a dime. It was all politics. There was no quid pro quo. They used an unlawful standard. And so when I see what this guy Jack Smith is doing to President Trump, it's deja vu all over again. And I should point out that this particular prosecutor, Jack Smith, was reversed by the U United States Supreme Court back in 2016, nine to nothing, for uh, a convicted gay Virginia governor on things that were not criminal. And in that particular case, the Democrat Supreme Court Justice Breyer said, quote, the uh, uncontrolled power of these criminal prosecutors is a threat to our separation of powers. And so what President Trump is facing today is far more important than just one guy running for president. This is about our democracy and about separation of powers and about a cancer that we have in our body politic. And that's these uncontrolled, weaponized prosecutors who are turning things that are legal into crimes. And the media, with all due respect, going along with them rather than doing their job to watch over them. I mean, I, I do appreciate your perspective. It's, it's important to ask tough questions on both sides, and yes. I appreciate you being on tonight. Let's talk about Mr. Trump. Let's okay. talk about national security, because last night we had Jamil Jaffer of the National Security Institute on the show. Uh, this is what he had to say about any potential threat to national security. Let's take a listen together. Uh, the fact that you're, you're keeping these materials outside of a SCIF, a sensitive compartment or information facility, the fact they were stored in the open, in the ballroom, we have no idea who went into that room. We have no idea there were thousands of people that transited through that facility. For all we know, uh, you know, foreign foreign assets had access to that information. That might not have caused immediate national security harm, but the potential is there and it's significant enough. That's why we have laws against retaining this kind of information and showing it to people without clearances. 
Uh, what is your reaction to his assessment? My reaction is to quote Barney Frank, the liberal Democratic congressman from Massachusetts, who just yesterday said that this was a mistake to bring charges against President Trump. There's no evidence of any security breach. There were just documents stored in certain places. Maybe there was some sloppiness, but that's negligent stuff. That's not criminal. And to criminalize these things, again, is part of a pattern that these prosecutors have been using for a long, long time. They did it to me. It started back in the 1990s when they were doing it to, to Bill Clinton for things that were not impeachable. And they've taken it to a whole new level with the persecution of President Trump with its Russian collusion, which was shown to be fake and was also showed, frankly, the complicity of the media not doing its job uh, to this, as well as some of the other things that are going on with him. So I think we as Americans should put a aside partisan politics. I'm calling on my fellow Democrats to put your hatred of Trump aside and put your country first. You shouldn't be for this. Mr. Bl Blagojevich, if Trump does go to prison, do you have any advice for him based on your experience? <laughs> well, he's, he's not going to go to prison because he's not guilty of anything. Now, I hope he doesn't get a rigged trial like I got. I don't have confidence in the system in that respect. Um, but I perish the thought that we would do something like that to a president of the United States. If that happens, we've gone beyond being a banana republic. We've become a Stalinist Soviet Union. So any advice for him if he did? If he what? If he did go to prison. I would simply encourage him to tell him if I'm ever president of the United States, I'll pardon him. Okay. Mr. Blagojevich, I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming okay. on the show tonight. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.